Welcome traders to the FX Market Insight for the 10th of July. All right, now, really, the uh, trading week really starts from now. Okay, after the US market is uh, open up through Monday, you generally have a pretty good idea of where uh, the momentum is in the currencies now. If we have a look at the, the majors here, Aussie uh, started the week on the, on the right foot, on the upward note. It's now sort of trading sideways after uh, you know, slowly climbing during that Asian and European sessions. Same with the uh, Kiwi. Uh, Dollar Yen has made a noticeable little jump above sort of 110.75 uh, sort of resistance there, having a little charge at the top side, the US dollar. Uh, Euro looked like it was gonna rally and it's just petered out. Um, and that's probably on the back of, you can see the initial gap here on Monday uh, in sterling. Now that was no easy trade by any stretch. You can see now uh, as Boris Johnson's resigned and everything looks a little bit messy in the UK, Sterling is now all over the shop. Um, and you can see that the, the levels it's breaking here, it's, it's a little bit of a mess. And then you've got also Dollar CAD uh, just trading sideways through trend lines. And that's very indicative of multiple geopolitical events. All right, so let me just uh, do give you a bit, bit of a quick tune up. So these blue lines I've got on my charts here, okay, these are the previ previous resistance lines going back to last Thursday, Friday. Um, I like to leave them there so I know where the levels were. But after you've come through uh, and the markets have reattached after the weekend, and um, particularly with sterling, sterling's a very good example of currencies topped out. Okay, we've got a new high, it's now lower. This is where that new, that, that old trend line resistance will come into play. And it becomes, uh, gives us something to, to actually go back towards. So I'll def definitely um, be adding that back to my chart here. Um, or reactivating it as a live resistance line. This support trend line has now been broken. Okay, this is all your, the process is with your technicals. You're not trying to work out whether it's going up or down, you're just trying to isolate the key uh, levels on your charts. And that's all I need to do there for sterling. So I've got uh, sterling refreshed. Uh, if anything, you could do the same for um, uh, euro. Okay, now that it's topped out and, and come back down. We've got a new sort of resistance level on the top side. Uh, and as you can see with Euro, there's our new level. We've got a very clear, good support line and we've got our resistance trend line. Uh, Aussie's pretty much where it is. Um, I'll be reluctant to sort of probably, probably put that line there at the moment because it's just more of a high. It's actually still that level. So I'm just going to delete that. The Kiwi one, I'm going to delete that line as well, except I will uh, come over here and tune up the support trend line. And dollar yen has broken down. This is where, you know, I like to change my uh, color just for my own recognition. The old resistance line, I'll leave that as blue. So I'll just leave it there for the moment. I know the, the next level on the top side is 111.03. And dollar CAD, okay, a real dog's breakfast at the moment. Um, if you're trading this technically or just trying to get it in and out of this thing, it's, it's a bit of a, a nuisance at the moment because of all the uh, conflicting comments. Um, there's no need to really change that resistance trend line. If anything, I'll just change that to blue, which to me means it's been broken. That's the old resistance line. And I'll come back and revisit that over the uh, coming sessions. All right, so technically, this is what we're left with. So now what you're trying to do with your technical levels is, is not overcomplicate things. We can see at the moment, Euro's in a bit of a uh, short-term uptrend. It's topped out up here. We've got a clear uh, level to get in on the top side a clear level to for a break trade or a range trade there. Now Sterling, we've got the gap there, we've got all this price action, it's and the geopolitical situation is too much of a mess at the moment for my liking. Um, what we do have is at the moment we have the Aussie in a, in a short term little uptrend, same with the Kiwi and also uh, well dollar yen. It, it, the dollar's mainly going up and I'll show you the um, US dollar here in a second. It's mainly going up because sterling's coming off, okay, the dollar basket. And you can see dollar cab was in a bit of a, a downtrend. It's now sort of trading sideways through those trend lines. Let me just show you the, um, you know, where, where the US dollar is now. The US dollar is by far and no means sort of out of the woodwork. And the major focus for the dollar will be the US CPI numbers on Thursday. Um, you can see on the dailies, it's coming back to test that uh, resistance line. And that's where it sort of seems to be pulling up at the moment. If anything, I would be um, just changing, taking, now it's bounced, just moving that support trend line to where it is. Now you can see very clearly where the levels are. Okay, we've got uh, 
94.22 is the top side. So at the moment, it's in a very short term uh, sort of downtrend. We've got a potential entry here on the top side to either get short or go long. Uh, but you still look on the dailies, it has you know, drifted lower and still under a little bit of pressure. All right, so that's the dollar. But when you come back to looking at the majors, okay, we're really looking to identify where the good pairs are. Now, this is where the daily analysis um, snapshot and the MyFX Trading Hub come into play. Now, let's just identify you know, the trading conditions just at the moment. Okay, well, there's still loads of geopolitical issues going around, although there's not a huge amount of volatility. And that's because a lot of these events are simmering. Okay, this US-China situation, it's probably the biggest sore thumb out there, but both the US and both China have been very quiet to this point. And that, so it's still hanging over the market like a massive cloud. Obviously, the Brexit issue is another, another one. Um, but when you come down to looking at the potential opportunities, you're looking at your, uh, your technicals, and then you're sort of coming down to look at the, um, the core releases for the upcoming sort of day. Okay, we've got US, uh, I mean, Chinese CPI, PPI, and UK manufacturing are two highlights to me. These are the two events that could really move the market around. Right, so when we come back to look at the, um, you think, okay, China, right? So what am I thinking about with China? Well, I'm thinking about the Aussie and the Kiwi in particular, right? These are the two pairs that are going to get impacted by that Chinese or could get impacted by the Chinese data. And we have two clear movements here. So this is actually really good. Your best trading opportunities today, is, to me, is the Chinese numbers, right? Now, there are situations where the data can get leaked. We can look at that before the release. But... The Aussie and Kiwi, they have a clear upward bias. So that means if the Chinese CPI numbers are strong, they should continue higher with their current short-term trend. If that data is, um, is weak, well, then we've got some, some lines here uh, or some support trend lines to actually trade through, right? So today, for me, uh, Aussie and Kiwi, because dollar yen's popping to the top side, I would be looking to get along Aussie yen and Kiwi yen, if, those data, if that data was strong. If the data isn't strong, well, I'll leave the uh, yen crosses out of it because what you can do is, if you, you're looking to get into the, um, the yen crosses, you know, if you're fighting dollar yen, well, then you're fighting a losing battle. So the Aussie might go up, but dollar yen won't, and vice versa. So or dollar yen, Aussie might go down, but dollar yen won't. So just look at the yen crosses, okay? Aussie yen, Kiwi yen, uh, just like their... Uh, US dollar counterparts just cruising to the top side. Euro yen also. Uh, you can see the wild price action here in sterling around the Brexit issues. Uh, dollar yen now cruising to the top side. Um, and CAD yen to the top side as well. Now, even if you're, you're not really focusing on dollar yen or the yen crosses, you can actually, the, the no brainer trade is at some stage, right? If this, especially if the US China trade tariff situation escalates, Dollar yen will come off aggressively. And what I'll be looking for is potentially, now just on the outset, I don't even have to think about it, is potential trade opportunities on the downside in the yen crosses. Now that's something that I will keep in the back of my mind as we move through these sessions. Okay, so now if we come back to, uh, you know, the whole structure of um, what's going on in the, um, on the news front, this is where, once again, the news is, is ridiculous, okay? It must be killing the news wise because they are just coming up with the same old crap. I think they're loving the fact that there's um, some UK ministers uh, or Brexit ministers resigning because it gives them something to write about. And the rest of this news, once again, still OPEC, uh, Trump, Trump's war on the world. Um, he, he, he's, he's, he's got domestic issues, he's got international issues. Um, and then you've got all the other bits and pieces with Brexit and whatever else. So basically the news is still dominated by geopolitical events and that's why the majors aren't doing a hell of a lot, okay? You've got to really understand you can't force the market to move when you want it to. And this is one of the, one of the things about being a uh, professional trader is you need to, to really slow down to the market's beat and when it picks up, you pick up as well. Now, so with that, um, so we've got a bit of a cloudy sort of trading conditions. We've got a really key release, the Chinese numbers in the UK manufacturing. The UK manufacturing, of course, will be um, somewhat blindsided by the Brexit issues at the moment. Very hard, but we could potentially get a short-term trade there. 
Um, and what we're really dealing with is the uh, situation here. If we come down to the day analysis snapshot, you're looking at um, a really beat up situation. Technically and fundamentally, the majors are nowhere, right? They are just drifting. Uh, on the dailies, they are just trading through trend lines. Sure, we have um, uh, a little bit of, um, on the hourlies, we have some short-term activity. On the, on the, on the longer-term perspective, we do have the, um, you know, some direction there as well. But we, we're looking for, for really high probability trades. And they generally come when we have direction and entry levels. At the moment, we don't have either. So just cool your jets. Right? That doesn't mean you don't, don't trade at all. This is where you really, once again, you really focus on what's coming up and what economic activity. This is what the bankers will be doing. I will isolate the best opportunity with the best technical setup. And by far and away, the Chinese numbers are that exactly. The Aussie and Kiwi have very clear short-term trends. The Chinese numbers will give those two currencies a uh, heartbeat, whether that data is strong or weak, and that's what we can really focus on. All right, so that's um, what I think is going to happen today. It's, it's still a little bit murky out there. Um, the Chinese numbers, as I said, by far and away the best. Uh, you can expect the media outlets to really focus in on the Bank of Canada as we get closer to Wednesday. And uh, that's, when th that, that's when, obviously, the dollar cab will really kick off. But uh, up until now, focus on the micro, micro manager situation. Aussie and Kiwi, Chinese numbers the best. As we go into that European session, let's have a look at sterling and the sterling crosses. If they are behaving quite, you know, without any sort of erratic moves, well, then we may have a nice trading opportunity there on the uh, UK manufacturing data. All right, guys, that's the uh, FX Market Insight for the 10th of July. I'll catch you in the trade zone. Good luck trading. Cheerio.